my father into this circle to provide a framework for this particular ceremony of the Four Directions. And I pass the circle over to Luis Valdez. I want you to visualize a circle. And within the circle, circumscribed by the circle, a square. This is one of the ancient symbols of the world, one of the ancient symbols of the Americas. Kunabku, the creator, according to the Maya. El único dador de la medida y el movimiento, the only giver of the measure and the movement. The movement is a circle, is a spiral. The movement is Feminine. The square is the measure. The square is male. You always knew males were squares. So. <laughs> Between those two movements, the world speeds through the galaxy. The Mayan's hero was a sphere. Within the sphere was a spiral. We are here to celebrate the four directions. But I want to emphasize that the four directions are not static. The four directions are always in motion. We are here to celebrate America. This moment, without being grandiose, has been 500 years in coming. Think about that. It's beautiful to be here in Boston, the cradle of the American Revolution. But there is a continent all around the city. The Iroquois, the Maya, the Apache, the Yaqui, the Aztecs. These are peoples that were here before, the Tainos, the Caribes. America was the half world already, a hemisphere of ancient civilizations before the coming of any of the Europeans. Today, we speak of Latinos, and this is a Latino gathering. But who are the Latinos? The original Latinos were the Romans. So what is this Latino gathering? It is a melding of two Americas that have remained separated after 500 years, and now are urging toward some kind of fusion. Anglo-America with Hispanic America. But this is laid on the basis of an indigenous culture that was already here. A culture that built 400 cities of stone, that traced the paths of the stars. This too is present in this so-called Latino conference. These are ideas that spring from the very earth of America. These are ideas that spring from the very heart of the planet and of America. Long time in coming. They share the universality with the cultures of the world. 
the minus and zero, the four directions. So they are dynamic. The Mayans believed in the four roads and the unity of the four roads. In order to become completely human, everyone had to travel the four roads. They had to travel the black road and the white road. South America, North America. They had to travel the yellow road, the east, and the red road, the west, the path of the sun. As they celebrated in the ancient ball game, which was theater and ritual at the same time in those 400 cities of stone. So when we evoke the four directions to initiate this conference, it is not just a hollow ritual. We are evoking the ideas that promoted civilization in the Americas. These are directions fraught with meaning forever. <coughs> we will travel all the four roads in this conference with all their significance. We will travel the circle in the square, the feminine and the masculine. We will travel the exchanges that happen dynamically between all of these polarities, north and south, east and west, and we will absorb the energy from the spiraling of all of these directions, forces, points on the compass, and on the planet. Ultimately, this is celebrating our universality. That is the word, the word that only means we're connected to the universe. We are part of a spiraling galaxy. We've come out of a cycle of 5,125 years, the fifth sun, into the new sun just last year. We are part of a new sun now and sexual sort. And it's up to us to redefine the universe for our humanity and those that come after us. So in that spirit, we're going to celebrate the four directions. And I ask you then to join me in this gesture. This is a couch. This, believe it or not, for the Maya, was exactly the same thing as this. This was zero. This was the spiral. This was one. This was the this is the force that generates the four directions, the force that spins the planet, the force that spins the galaxy. Embodied in this marine object, this concha, this conch, and they used it as a musical instrument to call forth the power of the four directions. We're going to start then with an invocation that is counterclockwise. We will go to the left, because we need to go to the left. <coughs> and then we will go to the right. First, then, we begin with an invocation to the east, the place from which the sun rises, the color yellow, where intelligence rises out of the mind, symbol of human intelligence, and yellow is that color that represents that direction. So we will turn all of us to the east. I ask you to raise both your hands in homage to this direction and to the idea of human intelligence. Turn now back to the center. And now we will turn to the north, in this direction. The north, the color white. North, the cold land. Death, the north, which is the beginning and the end of the cycle the winter, and then eventually promising the rebirth. So we pay homage to a norte, to the north. <laughs> turn back to the center, please. And now we turn to the west, to the color red, where the sun sets, the intuitive sense, the creative sense, the sense that guides all our artworks and guides our sensibilities in this conference. El Poniente. Turn back to the center, please. And now we turn toward the south. The south. The black road, also known as the green road, the blue-green road. Fertility, South America. This is the fertility of woman and of the matrix and of the Amazon jungle, the fertility of corn. We celebrate the South. Turn back to the middle. And so again, fertility.
futility and death, the two polarities of our existence. East and West, the path of the sun. From intellectual book learning to intuitive learning, let us invoke all of these forces in our conference and hope that this will lead us to greater understanding and patience. In lack age, ancient mind, tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other self. Si te amo, si te amo y te respeto a ti, if I love and respect you, me amo y me respeto yo, I love and respect myself. If I do harm to you, I do harm to myself. That's the embodiment of these ideas and the four directions. We need each other to spiral and to generate forces and power. There are no two Americas, only one America. The North and the South are coming together. The East and the West are coming together. And we will redefine the century with new ideas, the new millennium with new creativity. Now we are going to move to the second part of this invocation. And for this, I need to ask all the compañeros and compañeras that you clear the way. This is going to be our altar. Today is Halloween. This is Hallow, St. Hallow's Day, the eve of St. Hallow's Day, which is All Souls Day, November 1st, November 2nd, El Dia de los Muertos. And so we are going to celebrate in the spirit of Dia de los Muertos the rebirth of all of our ideas and all of our theater concepts and movements. And so for this, we're going to ask that everyone bring their offering. In order to do this, we want you to come up to the microphone and to give your name, state your point of origin, and a very brief mention of what your gift is and what it is that you are presenting. We will present these and then one right after the other. While one goes to place his um, offering, we will then bring the second person up. We are going to go counterclockwise this time. We went around this way, I mean clockwise this way, so we're going to start this way to the south and go this way, oh, to the east. Start in the east, <laughs> sorry. Start in the east and come this way, each one by one, all the way until we make the full round circle again. Is that clear? Yes? Yeah. Okay, this is my offering. I bring the power of the theater of the sphere, which is what El Teatro Campesino has been working on for almost 50 years now. The power of the farm worker, the so-called stoop laborer, who brings all of their humanity into the field to create the food that we all eat and consume. May the world learn to respect these workers and the power of the theater of the sphere. My name is Clive Valentine. I'm here from Brooklyn, New York City. And I have a photo here taken by Bolivar Arellano, Colombian. And this is a photo of Miguel Pinero and Sandra Maria Estevez. I have this hanging in my living room and it was a gift from my compañera. So I'm gonna put that on the home. I'm Patricia Ibarra, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, and I brought a line from a Cornyn play that made me stay in the theater and not become a literature professor. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kevin Becerra, I live in Boston, Massachusetts, and I brought Aristotle's The Poetics, the copy I used the first time I taught dramatic <coughs> I'm Matthew Paul Olmos. Uh, these are bracelets that I wear uh, while I live in the East because they remind me of my West. My name is Irma Mayorga and I'm a speech at Fit Dartmouth. I brought a picture of Helen Keller because when I was 12 years old, I got cast in a multiracial production as Helen. And so she has always been uh, the start with my thinking about theater. Hi, I'm Noe Montes. I teach in the Department of Drama in town at Tufts. Uh, this is a flash drive. It holds all the words that I've written about the Latino theater and the memory to hold a lifetime more. <laughs> my name is Jose Carrasquillo. I come from uh, Vieques, Puerto Rico. Uh, my work is in the DC area primarily. Uh, today, I am going to give you something that I have in my possession uh, for many, many years. It's a little cow. And uh, every time I open a show, um, I have it in my pocket and I just rub it. Um, and it just provided me with a lot of luck and a lot of inspiration over the years. Uh, in addition, I'm including a rainbow flag, uh, my uh, lesbian 
uh, gay, bi, and transgender community has made some strides this year. So I am placing on the altar a USDA certified gay child. <laughs> Jerry Ruiz from New York, originally from Brownsville, Texas, and uh, I brought the copy of Marisol and other plays that I bought and read shortly after college, and which completely uh, opened up this this new amazing theatrical world for me. Hi, I'm Enrique Lueta, and <clears throat> I brought. A copy of uh, Tennessee Williams' uh, *Camino Real*, which was uh, the, which was one of the textbooks from the very first uh, playwriting class I ever took, and it just reminds me of my time with Lois Weaver and Peggy Shaw, who convinced me to stop being a geologist and start writing. <laughs> <laughs> New York, and I brought two other fierce women with me, Maria Rene Cordes uh -huh. and Ruth Malachek. <laughs> my name is Alex Beach. I come from uh, New York, and I brought a rosary my mom gave me, uh, which represents to me my religion and the thing that I love and hate the most. And, uh, which is pretty much sometimes how I feel about gays. My name is Daniel Kakis, and I'm from Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua. Um, I'm giving to this organization, this group, this gathering, my father's hat. Um, my father uh, was always fighting against everything I did all the time, and uh, so he made me strong. And in the last five years of his life, he uh, was there for me and come to the shows and encouraged me. And uh, I think this is a great place to leave this hat. My name is Tiffany Vega. I hail from East Harlem, New York City. And I brought an image of the poster of Johnny Gonzalez Freak, which I saw when I was 13 years old and it made me realize that I can do theater about myself and my people, and not just West Side Story. <laughs> I'm Candido Tirado. Um, well, I bought a bottle opener that I've had for 20 years. And after every show, we celebrate. And sooner or later, somebody will ask. <laughs> <laughs> But it also gives me comfort because I was holding it in my pocket and I'm going to miss it a lot. <laughs> and tonight, one of you will ask. <laughs> my name is Brian Herrera. I come today from New Jersey, but always by way of New Mexico. And yesterday, as I left New Mexico coming here, I said, oh, I need an altar thing, so I bought postcards. And then, of course, I left them in the room, so I had to make a postcard. Um, because in some ways, wherever I go, I'm always a postcard from New Mexico. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Abel Lopez. I'm from Washington, D.C., originally from Texas. I'm the Gala Hispanic Theater. And I bring with me a photograph of Hugo Rebecca Medrano, who led a group of artists to create the first Latino art space in Washington, D.C. That, and I brought, bring them because they continue to bring the energy and the passion to the work, not only in the community, but I think to the whole people. And the other photograph is of an actor who's there to remind us that even though they may not still be with us in body, but they're still with us in spirit. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Karen Zacarias. I live in Washington, D.C., originally from Mexico City. I've never been able to sew, and I thought it's important to do things that scare you and that you can't do and see what happens. So I sewed this this weekend. It's got a Virgen de Guadalupe in it, and it's got a blank piece of paper for all the hopes that I hope we can write in it afterwards. So just to remind me to do things that are scary and different. Thank you. My name is David Lozano, and I'm with Catavia Theater Company from Dallas, Texas. And uh, this is a photo that I pulled it out from a play that we produced with El Laboratorio de la Mascara from Mexico City. And it's about a young Chicano boy, and I played this Chicano boy, uh, whose family comes from Mexico uh, for the Day of the Dead. And they also uh, bring with them, uh, following, following them, the deceased family members who are wearing the lack of masks uh, made out of wood from Mexico. And, uh, and this young boy learns about the tradition of the Day of the Dead. And so I feel I've always related to this character because I was a Chicano boy that didn't even know what Chicano meant. And I didn't know my, uh, my parents' language. And it is through theater that I learned all of this and that I live it now. And so I, uh, I, put, I placed this on the altar for my father who passed away last year, who I live and work with his flame every day. My name is Teresa Madero. I'm originally from Cuba, uh, via Southern California, and now from Dallas. Um, as I was looking around my apartment, what to bring, what to bring, this sort of popped up and said, take me, take me. Um, <laughs> it's got a lot of energy from being outdoors for many, many years. And it's a star with a crystal. It just reminds me to look up. Sometimes when I get into you know, the habit of looking down, it just reminds me to look up. My name is Amparo Garcia Cruz, my daughter, Surya. She's 14 years old. And if you hear this, there's some wild seeds in here. And this is a fan. I'm a fan of wild seeds. The wild seed, the, the, the seed that has no real reason to even exist, but that the wind gets a hold of it and it does what it needs to do and then amazing flowers grow. So thank you for welcoming me. And underneath this, there's well, the side, there's the New York Times review of my play that was about my hometown, Little San Diego, Texas, 4,000 people. And Underneath all that is the leftover recycled TCG fan because <laughs> I met most of you when I was a director's fellow, so I'm real grateful that that's the root of the wild scene. <laughs> My name is Anthony Rodriguez from the Aurora Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. Today I brought um, a picture of my parents who are from Cuba and have both passed on, and my father's Guayabera because it speaks to my heritage and honors the sacrifices that my parents made so that I could be an artist. My name is Beatriz Ruiz, and I come from Miami, Colombian origin, also via New York City. And this is an indigenous wisdom that the Brazilian friend who shared his wisdom with me gave it to me, and I would like to put it in the My name is Mario Alberto Sanchez, and I'm from Miami, and if you're from Miami, you gotta be Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> they're Cubans from the island, and they're also Cubans from the peninsula. I'm from the peninsula of Miami. <laughs> this was given to me when we opened Una Caja de Zapato Vacía de Virgilio Piñera, and it came from Cuba. It's a cigar leather case, which I didn't wanna give it away, but. You forced me to. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lupe Valdez, and I'm from San Juan Bautista. I brought a Huelga Eagle of the United Farm Workers, which was an inspiration for me when I first saw the Teatro Campesino perform 48 years ago on a fat med trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rose Cano from Lima, Peru, and now Seattle. And this is my mother, my father, Delia Toranzo Toranzo and Rodolfo Cano Fuentes. And um, 
I realized after a while that I uh, inherited um, their art sensibility and the reason I'm, I'm an artist, because they were artists. My father was a beautiful painter. He painted beautiful houses. And he mixed colors back when you mix the, the Porvo and then and the neutral color. And um, so I think he taught me a lot about that. And my mother makes beautiful clothing. It was an artist. She told me it was an art to sew a buttonhole, the ojal, and it was an art to ironing. Um, and so I thank them. My father's passed away and my mother's still alive, so I wanted to honor her and be that. Thank you. My name is Mark Valdez, and um, I am the son of migrant farm workers. And uh, this was, I was recently in Hawaii, and this is a, a, a gift that was given to me. It's a, it's a nut, it's a tree nut, and it's, uh, it's a seed inside of this thing. And it reminds me of gift giving, it reminds me of hospitality, it reminds me of the land, and uh, that's why I brought it. Hi, I'm Diane Rodriguez. Uh, I'm a native Californian. I live in Los Angeles now. Uh, I was a student at UC Santa Barbara in the 70s, and I went to the first Denas Festival, which is in San Jose, California. And there are people here that were with me. <laughs> I will not name names. <laughs> and I saw a performance of La Gran Carpa de los Vasquachis, which was phenomenal. And uh, it changed my life, and it changed so many people's lives. And uh, I, I really, really particularly like the guy that played the devil. <laughs> and he uh, eventually became my husband. <laughs> and so uh, years later, I, jo I mean, I joined the theatrical practically the moment I saw my godfather ran and said, please take me. And years later, I was in the show, and this is a program cover, and um, it has my name on it, and I was so proud to be a part of, you know, the best company ever, so that's it. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Olga Garay English, and I was at the 1986 convening that everybody keeps talking about. <laughs> I was young and vibrant then. <laughs> from the third annual uh, Miami International Hispanic Theater Festival, which I helped my dear, dear friend, Maria Ernesto Sanchez start um, about 28 years ago in Miami. And um, um, I've lost some weight, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that was really my introduction to this fabulous, family of people, and I'm so proud that I was there in 86 when I was young, and I'm so proud that I'm here tonight to share this with you all, so thank you for having me. When you're still young. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Juliet Carrillo, um, I'm from Los Angeles, and uh, I ran the Hispanic Playwrights Project from 1997 uh, to 2004, and uh, I brought some brochures that were calls for entries from that particular program uh, and I brought it because I got to meet so many amazing <coughs> amazing artists incredibly talented artists many of which are here and so I brought them to honor you guys and to celebrate you guys. Hi I'm Lori Woolery I'm from Los Angeles California and um, I brought a picture of my aunt my tia Elena Vidal de Ramos, because she came to this country when she was 18, and it was her um, courage um, and her sacrifice that allowed me to do what I do. And um, I source her every time I'm working on something, and I want to share her strength with you all. Hi, I'm Olga Sanchez. I brought, uh, oh, I'm from Portland now, originally from New York. I brought a photograph of my mentor, Ruben Sierra, mm -hmm. whom I knew briefly, but who had an amazing impact on my life through his generosity. This is a photograph of him in the year before he died. Descansa en paz. 
And this is a program of the memorial that happened at the University of Washington where he taught um, and where he started his group theater. And I believe Teatro de Piojo as well, part of that group, before the group. And so I place this on the altar. He was an immense inspiration. Hi, I'm Marisa Chivas. I come from Los Angeles via Nueva York and Cuba. I, ha I brought a glass of rum. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> from a very special bottle that I brought uh, from Cuba 10 years ago. And it sat in my pantry waiting clearly for this weekend. <laughs> and I uh, bring it in particular uh, to honor uh, my ancestors. Hello, I'm Octavio Feliz, and I come from San Francisco, but originally from El Paso, and I bring a piece of California on the beach. All right. Hi, my name is Jorge Huerta, and I bring a collector's item. This is a button from the Zoot Suit production. <laughs> and it ain't easy to give it up, but I give it in honor of everything that this play did to change the face of American theater. There's a theme developing because my offering is also about Zoot Zoot. My name is Christopher Acebo. I am a living in Ashland, originally from Los Angeles. And I bring this because it is the first memory that I have as a nine-year-old boy of my parents getting ready to go to the theater. My mother getting dressed up, my dad telling her to get the hell into the car because they're going to be late. <laughs> and the excitement of that night is, palp is palpable to me. And, uh, by a great, a great joy in my life is that I got to design this production in Chicago. So that is my honor. My name is Tony Sonera, and I come from Portland, Oregon. Um, I brought a calavera, which I have named Little Jim Cuevas. Little Jim Cuevas was a Puerto Rican actor, the first um, actor that I, he was in a production that I directed. And um, Jim Cuevas was a pain in the ass. And, but he was, God bless him. But, um, but he had more passion and love for Latino theater than anyone I have ever met. And so I bring him here because he would have loved this. Buenas noches. Uh, my name is Elisa Marina Alvarado um, from San Jose, California. And I bring some little butterflies, um, my uh, purepecha, uh, people, the, the butterfly is the spirits of those que han cruzado, those who have passed over. And they do their migration, and they return about this time of year to, to visit us. So I brought some butterflies, and I also brought some tobacco and sage uh, from my garden. And of course, a little calabana head, it's kind of cool. It's kind of <laughs> All the wonderful teatristas who play calaveras. In yeah, really. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marisela Trevino Orta. Um, I'm from San Francisco, but originally from Texas. I brought two things. I brought a photo of a mural that Galeria de la Raza did. It is a commentary on what's happening right now in my city, especially the Mission District, about um, the hypergentrification that's happening, the people that are being pushed out. And then the other thing I brought was a poem for my grandmother, uh, Erdinda Trevino, who passed away last year. Hello, I'm Evelina Fernandez from Los Angeles, California, Califas. I bring with me a picture of my amazing sister, Lupe Ontiveros, who should be here with us. Um, Lupe and was, became my mother in Zoot Suit. She was my first stage mother. Yeah. And she's the mother of our theater downtown LA. Hi, my name's Sandra Islas. I'm in between La Jolla, California, and Los Angeles. I'm born in New Mexico, and I brought a picture of my daughters. Mm -hmm. They're the reason I help support the arts. 
because I believe it's important for the next generation and to power, empower young girls. Uh, my name is Tiffiana Lopez, and I'm from Los Angeles, and I brought two things. Uh, the first thing uh, is a paper that has the word INTAR on it, because INTAR was the complete seed of all the work I do in Latino theater, and uh, meeting Migdalia Cruz, and setting the seed off in place about meeting all the other playwrights that um, structure my work, but I also brought Twinkies to represent <laughs> another path of my work, which is um, uh, the dramaturgy and uh, venturing into performance because it was when I first performed Luis Alfaro's Moo approaches that I accepted <laughs> that telling personal stories about our wounds is the source of everything we might do to transform ourselves and heal our community. My name is Rose Portillo. I'm from Los Angeles, California. But I'm a native, but wherever I go, I bring Isleta Texas with me, the pueblito, soy tigua también. And uh, my father and I were uh, rather tumultuous, and yet he took me to the theater. And what I realized, the moment that he took me to the theater, there was clarity, and we could talk to each other. And so I bring a crystal sphere, and I encourage you to hold it, because what I discovered is when you hold the sphere, you hold light in your hands. Hi, I'm Chantal Rodriguez. I'm from Los Angeles, the daughter of Cuban and Spanish immigrants. Uh, I bring two things. I bring a small mask from Italy that represents my journey from being in love with Comedia del Arte to my awakening with uh, learning of the work of El Teatro Campesino and the mask work that's related to that. And I also bring a casket from a production at the Los Angeles Theater Center, which is my second home. It's a bottle of vodka. It also represents what we do after the show. <laughs> My name is Jose Luis Valenzuela, and I brought a little tequila in memory of my great friend Jose Guadalupe. My name is Martin Pinate. I'm uh, coming from the Sonora Desert, Chucson, also known as Tucson. Um, I'm bringing a crow feather. The crow is a, uh, the messenger. Uh, so I uh, bring it in the spirit of that we will be messengers from wherever you're coming from and also to take messages back there. Uh, and also that uh, like, like, the, like birds are able to fly and sort of see the big picture, so we're able to do that as well. My name is Lily Garcia, Garcia Loza, originally from Los Angeles, now living in Ashland, Oregon. And I'm bringing something that reminds me of the first theatrical experience that I had at the age of 15, the first touch of Shakespeare which for an English language learner was an incredibly frightening experience. So I bring Juliet's dagger from Romeo and Juliet. The TSA did not take it from me. <laughs> it's amazing, I was a little worried. Um, and, to, and to always remember that childlike wonder that I had in the multi-purpose room at Bonita High School in, uh, in Laverne, California. Uh, and to always remember that when I, when I saw Juliet in Algebra 2 the next week, my first question to her was not, how did you learn all those lines? But show me how you did the thing with the dagger. Show me how, because I want to do it. I'm Maria Espinosa. I'm a voice teacher and a Sonoran girl. And uh, I bring a plaque that my father gave me, may he rest in peace, um, when he, I was 10 years old. And uh, he's the man who taught me to sing gritar with the best of them, and told me it was okay, and that's showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking Micah to stay, my name is Marcos Nakara, and I bring uh, two things to offer, and they're both connected to this wonderful artist. Uh, I live in Los Angeles now, but I'm originally from Arizona, and I, I, my heart hurts when I think of my state and uh, the condition that it's in. And so I, my hope is that through artists like all of us in the room, that good things can come to the place of, that we live in. And uh, Micah, uh, this is a gift actually to me from Micah, and a traveler gave it to her to keep her safe. And so I'm offering it back out to us to keep us safe in this journey. And so that's the physical offering that I have. And the second <coughs> one is an intention that also comes from Micah too, because as an artist, uh, and specifically a Chicano gay artist, I've always been struggling to find my voice. 
And Micah, I took a workshop with her once, and she said, Micah's just released the tension. And I said, Micah, what does that mean? She said, ah, Micah's just bend over and release your sphincter. <laughs> so in that spirit, I said, <laughs> My name is Juan Amador from San Francisco, California. Uh, I brought an image of the logo of my first Teatro Troupe, Teatro Locos in Pittsburgh, California. After eighth grade, I never took drama to school because I didn't see myself in any of the work that was being done. And Teatro Locos made me believe that I could be included in this world, and that's the reason I'm here. Today. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. I'm Luis Alfaro. And I, I'm from Los Angeles, California. Uh, last year, two years ago now, I got to work in Chicago in Oedipus El Rey. And my collaborators were a group of young men, ex-gang members. And one of them one day said to me that he had just had a little boy. So I bought him this little t-shirt that said Frijolito. And, <laughs> and then the next day I went to rehearsal and G-Dog had been shot and killed on the south side of Chicago. So tonight I get to finally give him the t-shirt. Hi everybody, my name is Josefina Lopez, I'm from Boyle Heights, Los Angeles, and I bring uh, this little Mexican doll straight from Mexico from an indigenous woman's hands who represents to me the indigenous struggle, but she also represents the sacred feminine and the goddess energy that's coming, and nothing's happening with our goddess energy, um, so I honor her because she's bringing in the new renaissance. And this little girl, this feminine energy, brings the green corazón, which represents the healing heart. Hi, my name is Jesus Reyes. I come from a little ranchito called East LA. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Uh, but I had seven seminal years in San Jose. Um, and I didn't bring anything because I built altars, and I think they're beautiful, but I've never had one. I have one, sort of. It's a picture of my mom and my aunt. But, Josefina Lopez had her little plastic bolsita, <laughs> and she was so kind, thank you so much for sharing with me. And she gave me, while well, I picked it out, a cross. <laughs> so, what I'm putting on the altar is a little private, a little thought, and I ask you to share a thought with me, but don't say it, just think it, and that's what's going to go on out. Thank you. Y'all are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Bernardo Solano. I, I live in Los Angeles uh, by way of uh, New York and originally from Colombia. And uh, my very first uh, teacher, as uh, Marie Irene Fornes. And uh, one of the things that she, uh, we talked many, many days at the Hispanic Clerics Lab in New York. And one of the things that she talked about was that as writers, we, we have some responsibility uh, to talk and to use our writing to uh, address uh, our community and, and to speak for us to the general public. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I'm now uh, also directing at an institution in California, in LA, Pomona, to be exact. And uh, this year I'm uh, directing a, a play of The Danube uh, by uh, Irene. And uh, it's for her. Hi, I'm Lisa Cortes. Uh, I'm from Chicago. Chicago! Yeah! <laughs> but I grew up all over the place. My father's a Cuban exile. My mother was an Air Force brat, so they were very peripatetic. So I grew up kind of between Nebraska, Wisconsin, Texas, Chile, Brazil, Colombia. So the first play that I read that made some kind of, that, made the, that had some shape in it that could not explain my experience, but it's in some way I I believed in, yeah, I had a shape, but I believed in was The Balcony by Jean Genet. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Ann Garcia Romero. I am from South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> um, I bring a copy of my Fe Bonita statue because of two reasons. One, I wrote this play inspired by a play I saw with my tia in Madrid, a uh, uh, golden age comedia. And second of all, my mom was pregnant with me. She was studying plays like this. <laughs> My name is Tlaloc Antonio Rivas. Um, I am, right now I'm from Iowa, Field of Dreams. Uh, originally from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Um, and I, I brought a couple of things. One is, um, uh, one is uh, to honor the, the first Latina to win the Pulitzer Prize as a postcard of my recent production of uh, Water by the Spoonful, which was at the University of Iowa. Uh, and the second is an uh, approach that was given to me by a lovely actress by the name of Linda Lopez. Uh, I was, it was my first uh, assisting, uh, assistant directing opportunity at El Teatro Campesino for La, for la Virgen de Tepeyac, where uh, I assisted Rosa Maria Escalante. And it's, uh, it's a coffin-shaped um, brooch handmade from tin, and it has a little muerto, based, uh, inspired by Posada. And for me, I'm bringing this in honor of our, our deceased and loved ones, and those who have passed and who have inspired us. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Richard Perez, and um, I am currently from Michigan, but originally from Oakland, California. And, um, I, I brought a play by August Wilson because something strange happens every time I've seen one of his plays. I absolutely lose my shit and start crying like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> At some point in the play that happens and so uh, it just always inspires me and reminds me the power of great language and words. How's everybody doing? <laughs> My name is Alberto Hutiniano, and I'm from the great white north, and uh, I'm originally from New York, but I've lived uh, most of my life in Minnesota, the great state of Minnesota, and uh, I'm honored and humbled to be uh, with all of you here tonight. Um, I bring a little streamer, which um, I used to take with me when I did my dog and pony show, um, in different places in the communities when I started Teatro del Pueblo. And uh, just a reminder that many people thought I was kind of wacky for starting a uh, theater among Norwegians and Swedes. <laughs> and, uh, and it always reminds me of uh, my center. Thank you. My name is Quinan Valdez, and I'm from the north of California, San Juan Bautista. <laughs> and I brought two communications here, originals from 19, the 1970s, one by Teatro Campesino called El Teatro Notes, and the other, Chicano Theater 3 magazine issued by Tenaz, El Teatro Nacional de Aslan. Um, hi, my name is Alex Mena. Uh, I live in Chicago. Uh, by way of Miami, not Cuban. Um, <laughs> maybe I always wished it, but I'm not. Um, okay, so I brought two things, and it just occurred to me now that they're religious. That's not why I hold them or bring them. Um, they both, I came across them actually this summer, and yet they are two objects that I have touched and held every day at very desperate moments and at very happy moments for the past four months. Um, one is Rosario from New Mexico, a place that I first, for the very first time in my entire life, felt incredibly connected to the ground and dirt and land around me never happened to me before. And the second is a prayer card from the mission in San Juan Bautista, uh, the second place that I felt I had a, just a spiritual uh, awakening connection and a feeling of coming home that I have never had before. Um, so I bring these because they brought me so much luck, happiness, and uh, peace. My name is Abigail Vega. I came here from Chicago, originally from San Antonio, and via Emerson College in Boston, so it's very weird to be back. Um, <laughs> And I brought um, a boarding pass for all of you. Uh, this summer we did a summer tour, and I feel like at least a third of you either took us to dinner or read some of or or wrote reviews about us or supposed we could do it, but we didn't want to do it anymore. So this is the boarding pass from Heathrow back to the States, and it says we survived. This is community. This is you guys. So I'm giving it back. <laughs> I am a playwright. Um, I 
live in Chicago. I'm a Tucson girl. I'm from California. I'm from Oregon. Um, I've had the pleasure of spending a lot of time on the beach and writing a lot of plays inspired by the ocean. And one day I woke up really early and the ocean spit out this brain. It's a piece of coral that's fossilized. And I really love to meditate on objects when I write. And to me, this object is about breaking down old structures and building new ones. I'm Jacob Abadon. Um I'm from Gilroy originally, but in Chicago, soon to be New York City. Um, and I drew a picture of La Virgen because the moment that changed my life was seeing my mother perform in La Virgen de Pepeac um, in 1986, 85, um, and she was a danzante. Um, and that moment was the moment I knew I wanted to be in the theater. Um, and I think La Virgen also gives me strength, and I think she's watching over us this entire weekend. I'm Sandra Matthews. I'm a Chicana who somehow wound up in Chicago. Um, but happily. I brought uh, the cover of a Sandra Cisneros book because when I was a college student at Fresno State, I went to hear her read from one of her books. And I couldn't stop crying and I couldn't figure out why. And the friend that I went with just kept handing me tissues. And I just kept bawling. And when it was over, I realized it was because um, it was the first time I saw somebody who looked like me doing their art. And so that night I decided that instead of joining the convent, I was going to be an actor. <laughs> And my grandmother died one morning making rice. Um, I saw her just a few minutes after she had had her stroke. And the image of her lying on the linoleum kitchen floor of my parents' house with rice scattered all around her body stayed with me. And it became the image that inspired me to create my first piece. I'm Ricardo Gutierrez. I'm from Chicago. The first four and a half years of my life were spent in Mexico, and I have very few memories uh, of those first four and a half years before I even knew there was the United States. And uh, one of those memories I have is uh, <laughs> of a Mexican top that my uncle had uh, shared with us. And uh, I happened to be in Mexico about three months before my son turned uh, four years old, and I came back with 24 uh, tops similar to this. <laughs> we had a party, and I was get, I gave them to as a party gift uh, to the kids. And you have not lived until you've seen four, uh, 24 four-year-olds trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it, it reminds me that we not only pass down uh, our memories uh, to to our children. But uh, we also uh, pass so much of our work. Everyone's been talking about mentors and stuff, and I've had many, many mentors, and the cycle keeps going. We don't keep it within ourselves. We pass it on to others as well, and that's what I'm giving to the altar. Hi, my name is Regina Garcia. Uh, I'm originally from Alta Playboy, the people, New York, and now living the wonderful adventure of the state of Illinois. And, uh, <laughs> So to me, it uh, symbolizes everything that has, uh, has stayed quiet, stagnant, has not moved, and needs to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nancy Garcia Loza. Uh, I know there's another Garcia Loza in here because I had a moment when that happened. <laughs> I come from Chicago before that. Somewhere along the line, I come from Jalisco. I'm a pocha. I'm from here. I'm from there, too. And I made a little mason jar that reminded me that the reason um, that I got into this crazy world is for the storytelling. Um, I put in this jar the names of all of the ghosts that I carry. Some of them are ghosts that are still alive. Some of them are ghosts that are truly ghosts, but they're ghosts that didn't know how to write. Um, some of them are, are my abuelas, my abuelos, and they taught me the power of words. They were wonderful storytellers, but they taught me a powerful lesson 
If you can't write it down, you can't tell your story, and it's going to get taken from you. <laughs> it just, please let me do this. I just want to take you all in because this is amazing. I, oh my god. Um, I bought this um, North Star to guide us. Um, to you guide tell us. Who you are? I'm Tanya Caracho. I <laughs> represent Chicago when I've been in LA the past two years, but I'm representing Chicago. Um, <laughs> I, I brought a North Star to guide us because I have so much faith in what we're doing here, what I think we can do, the potential, and I'm shaking because I'm feeling all of you guys' energy. Um, I also brought, this is uh, una, una Luna because it's the single most important symbol in my life. My middle name means Selene, it means Luna, and uh, I started a company named Luna. and. Uh, for the past three years. Uh, there hasn't been a full or a new moon that I haven't prayed to Ixchen. Um, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Christopher DePaula. Um, I am living in Chicago, originally from South Florida. Uh, I just brought a simple pen. Um, uh, when you think about it, there's a lot of complexity and mechanics actually inside that make this thing work. And so it was kind of symbolic of uh, the simple decision I made to start writing and then realizing now, still today, being here, how complex that <laughs> decision <laughs> really was. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ivan Vega. I'm from Chicago. My parents are from Puerto Rico. So I, uh, I was working one day uh, a job as a, as a bartender, one of the many jobs, you know, as artists that we do in order to support the art. And this Croatian lady who was uh, one of the cleaner, cleaning ladies in the, in the building gave me um, a prayer card and she gave me this as well, which is the, uh, the saint of Croatia. And on the front of it it says, if you knew how much I love you, you'd cry of joy. So I, I'd always keep it in my wallet and there's even an imprint from, from the little medallion that's hanging there. So uh, it just reminded me of uh, the kindness of people, but also reminded me how important uh, of faith, love, uh, miracles, and, uh, and kindness are from strangers. Short. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Betty Dutzvich, and I'm a playwright. And, uh, so I brought this necklace, which has a peacock feather on it, um, which reminds me of Oscar Wilde and the aesthetic movement, which is my family, my first family in writing, and uh, of Irene Fortnes and the Bohemian Spirit, which reminds me of Off Off Broadway and that the beginning of that movement and how it impacted so many of us, and of Wapa. Hi, I'm Melinda Lopez, and I'm last. <laughs> um, um, I'm the daughter of uh, Cuban nationals, uh, born in Colombia, and a uh, proud member of Red Sox Nation. I love Boston. <laughs> I brought basil um, to um, purify and sanctify and keep out in Malojo. <laughs> Not that there is any Malojo here. I wrapped it in two of my grandmother's handkerchiefs that she embroidered for me, which I'm not going to leave on the altar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have a picture of my daughter um, because everything I do, I do for her. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your names, for sharing where you're coming from, for sharing your stories of inspiration, for inspiring us, and for creating this altar.
for lack of a better word, but it is not a museum by any means. We welcome you to touch it, to pick up the stuff, to look at it, to read it. Just don't take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> and we, it will be up for the next three days for us to find inspiration, for us to collect our inspiration back, for us to fuel ourselves with, to nourish us, and, uh, and then come back to the circle. We are going to take a five-minute break. <laughs> Thank you.